Remember that we are people who have preferred our wills to his. Accepting his power to become new persons in Christ, let us then confess our sin to God and to one another. Merciful God, you pardon all who truly repent and turn to you. We humbly confess our sins and ask for your mercy. We have not loved you with a pure heart, and nor have we loved our neighbors as ourselves. We've not done justice, loved kindness, or walked humbly with you, our God. Oh, have mercy on us, God, in your loving kindness. In your great compassion, cleanse us from our sin. Create in us a clean heart, O oh God, and renew a right spirit within us. Do not cast us from your presence. Or take your Holy Spirit from us. Restore to us the joy of your salvation. And sustain us with your bountiful spirit. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And in his love for us, he sent his son Jesus into this world to serve his will to rescue us. Though it cost him greatly, he was willing to do that, to serve the Father's will for our good. And it is on that basis I announce to you that your relationship with God is restored. The wrongs that we have done, the guilt that we feel is here removed because Jesus Christ has taken it. You're a forgiven child of God in the name of the Father and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
have declared that your kingdom is among us. Open our eyes to see it, our ears to hear it, our hearts to hold it, our hands to serve it. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. We invite you to be seated for a musical offering by our handbell choir. It really is joyful noise when we hear you all play. Thank you so much for serving today. Uh, our first reading for today from uh, the Holy Scripture comes from the second chapter of James. What good is it, my brothers and sisters, if someone claims to have faith but has no deeds? Can such faith save them? Suppose a brother or a sister is without clothes and daily food. If one of you says to them, go in peace, keep warm and well-fed, but does nothing about their physical needs, what good is it? In the same way, faith by itself is not, if it is not accompanied by action, is dead. For the reading of the gospel, will you please join me in standing? Our gospel reading today from Mark chapter 10. Jesus called them together and said, you know that those who are regarded as rulers of the Gentiles lord it over them, and their high officials exercise authority over them. Not so with you. Instead, whoever wants to become great among you must be your servant, and whoever wants to be first must be slave of all. For even the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve, and to give his life as a ransom for many. This is the gospel for today, and we invite you to be seated as we sing.
officially good morning. And uh, before I uh, get into God's word for us today, which is the important part, I just want to uh, just take a personal moment and just say thank you. Uh, last week, we were supposed to just read through the anniversary, anniversary honorees. That's what was supposed to happen. And there was uh, an outpouring. And as I said to, I think the elders yesterday, the, um, you know, with my dad, sometimes it is, you, you know, with my dad passing and um, with the 40th wedding anniversary, I've received so many cards, so many kind words. And uh, thank you for being the people of God. Thank you. Thank you. So, have you ever, when a parent repeats something, what's that mean? Oh, have you ever had a parent say to you, I want you to pick up your toys? Did you hear me? I want you to pick up your toys. Now, when they say that twice, what's that mean? <laughs> right? That means I really, really want you to do this. And then when they repeat something like that, and if Jesus ever repeated something, do you think he might, in a similar way, want us to take note of it? Today, we're going to take a look at uh, this portion of Scripture, a concept that he repeated on multiple occasions. It's all part of our 40-day uh, red-letter challenge in which we are taking a look at those red-letter words in the Bible, in some translations, with the words of Jesus. And we're taking a look at the kind of the major concepts that he communicates in the course of his public ministry, being in relationship with him, being forgiven and forgiving others, serving, giving, and going. If you ever miss any one of those messages, you can go to our website, st-matthew.org, and you can get caught up with that. But as I said, there, are, there is a teaching, perhaps as much as any of his teachings, that he repeated on several occasions. In fact, by my count, four occasions. He repeated the same message. It has to do about serving. Their names were John and Mary. But it could have been you. And maybe it was. They met by chance and immediately they hit it off. It was one of those love at first sight kinds of things. Uh, the early days of their relationship were just like a fairy tale. He was her prince charming, and she was the beautiful princess. Everyone said that they looked like the perfect couple. And though they came uh, from different backgrounds and they had their share of differences, as all couples do, they were confident their growing love for each other would be able to overcome whatever they might encounter. I believe it was Christmas when they announced their engagement. It was a, a spring day when the knot was tied amidst the chirping of the birds and the weeping of the mothers with happiness in the front row. The honeymoon and the honeymoon period were everything they could have hoped for. Oh, sure, they had their little young lover spats that are often accompanied the first uh, year of marriage. It, it was about month eight when the first dark cloud began to appear. It was a simple thing, no big deal. Um, they had been invited by some friends to go on out for dinner on Friday night. Now, John had had a long, intense, exhausting week, and he just wanted to collapse and stay home. Extrovert Mary, however, was ready to go out anytime, anywhere, anyhow. And that's when they had the first big one. The issue didn't go away. Two weeks later, there was another argument. It was another big one. And this one had to do with cleaning the basement. Who's going to do it? Whose job was it? And there began more, they began to become more and more critical of one another. Our marriage would be better if only you did your share. And the dreamlike marriage was turning into a nightmare. Why had they ever gotten married? It was as if these were now two separate individuals who had to look out for themselves, defend their rights, and fight for their own wishes. What was the problem? Well, there were several things that were going on. But at the root, there was a longing for their life, their marriage, to go their own way. 
quite frankly, it's the way that we sin-broken people are wired, every one of us. Jesus said, you know that those who exercise authority, who are, who are regarded as rulers of the Gentiles, lord it over them, and, in their, and their high officials exercise authority over them. The Bible elsewhere says, in the last days, people will become lovers of themselves. Let's admit it. Let's just, let's just admit it. Uh, today, many of the role model, models that we see in sports and entertainment, much of what is taught in secular counseling and much of what we experience in school and work is, sends the same message. You've got to stick up for yourself, your own rights, your own self-fulfillment. We live in a culture that understands consumption, just not so much contribution. Advertising and marketing tout how their products will help you so you can have a better life. And we Christians are not immune to this. We're wired the same way. Think about, let's get personal for this, a minute here. Think about the decisions that you make in your life. And think about how often the decisions you make in your life have behind them almost imperceptibly a bias toward what you want, right? How could I be the first in line at school? Certainly not the last. Is my piece of pie bigger? Is the distribution of chores favorable for me? How does my bonus compare to somebody else's? Does that decision, well, is that in my best interest? And how, and, and what movie should we watch? I hope we watch this one, yeah. It just comes natural to us. It's how we are wired. It's not the best way to live, and it's certainly not Jesus' way for us, as it was not for John and Mary. In the midst of their deteriorating marriage, John and Mary did one good thing that would make a lasting difference. It happened on the occasion of one terrible argument. By this time, the... Uh, uh, the anger, the frustration toward the other had grown significantly. And in one particularly loud argument where there was abusive language, John, for the first time ever, slapped Mary. He caught himself. She was shocked. He was shocked. He quickly grabbed her. I'm so sorry. And in that moment, they both realized that left to themselves, this marriage was going to end in divorce. They needed help. So they called up the pastor. Now, the first counseling session might be described as a controlled fight. <laughs> I mean, it really was. John and Mary dumped out a list of complaints and grievances against the other. And of course, the other would then have to respond with a couple of barbs of their own. Repeatedly, the pastor had to interrupt and cool them down so that this volatile interaction would not explode. During the week, there was another big argument. John threatened to quit the counseling and divorce. Counseling session number two, they began to prioritize and work through their long list of grievances. It, it, was, it was in the third session that there was a first glimmer of hope at the end of this dark tunnel of discord. Working through their list, the pastor kind of paused and remarked, John, it sounds like you want Mary to be your hired maid rather than your best friend. It were simple words, but somehow the moment was right, the spirit was there, Somehow that clicked to him, and shortly thereafter to her. They began to see that what they were expecting their partner to do in marriage was to serve their own desires so that their marriage, their life could go their way. And they began to realize that if marriage for them was going to be good and fulfilling, there would need to be a heart change in them, not not change the other person, which they had been trying to do, but they would need to change their whole approach toward the other.
instead of treating their spouse as a hired hand, they would need to serve their partner. What John and Mary were beginning to understand was what Jesus repeatedly taught his followers, not on one occasion, but four times. That Jesus' way is a way of service, not of self, but of others. Jesus said, rulers of the Gentiles lord it over them. Their high officials exercise authority over them, but not so with you. Instead, whoever wants to become great among you must be your servant. And whoever wants to be first must be slave of all. Elsewhere, the Bible says, do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit, but in humility, consider others better than yourself. Each of you should look not only to his own interests, but also to the interests of others. And again, nobody should seek his own good, but the good of others. This is the way of Jesus. And it is countercultural. It is counter to the way that we, in our sin brokenness, are wired. The truth is that by ourselves, we do not have the ability to do this because we're wired to look out first for number one, us. So to somehow be a servant to others, we don't have it in us. But that is why Jesus added in this reading the basis, the foundation, the resource upon which we could do something countercultural. He said, for even the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. Like we said in that time of forgiveness, God has a heart for you. Every one of us in this room, he loves you more than you can imagine. And he sent Jesus to serve his will for your good. Even though the cross was no picnic. But he did that for our good. And that good that comes to us in pardon and peace with the living God has a way of transforming us to also have the same servant-like heart that Jesus had. Jesus is a servant. It's who he is. And the Spirit uses Jesus' service of us to enable us all the more, little by little, to become servants of others. As followers of Jesus, we're made in his image to represent him to the world so that when people take a look at us, they get a picture, a small little picture of what, what our God is like. He's a serving God. He's a caring God. That he is. The Bible says it this way elsewhere. For God is at work in you to will and to act according to his good purpose. What God calls us to do, he gives us the ability to do. Now, while being a good steward of our lives means that we are to take care of ourselves, that is to be sure, the Spirit enables us to serve others, not just to consume from others, but to contribute toward others, to represent that very nature of God to the world. Now, as our, our James Bible reading today pointed out, what good is it, my brother and sister, if someone claims to have faith but has no deeds? So we can talk about this, but God's calling us to take his words. Jesus is calling us to take his words and put them into practice. So with the service of Jesus toward us as that motivation, here's some homework. First thing is this week, with God's help, seek to selflessly serve someone. Seek to selflessly serve someone this week. And it may be somebody at home. It might be your parent. It might be a child. It might be a spouse. It could be somebody at school. It could be a teacher. It could be a fellow student. It could be at work where you're going to serve somebody who hasn't been so kind to you and you'd serve. It might be in the neighborhood or the church. Who is it? is to selflessly serve another, not to somehow check off the to-do list of a 40-day challenge, but because that's just who Jesus is called and is enabling us to be. And then secondly, how might you serve others here at church? I just got to be honest with you. One of the things that have been a, um, well, a hit that has happened to the church since COVID is the slow return of volunteers. Behind the scenes of the ministry, we are in many places scrambling to get people just to take care of basic ministry needs. So here's what I want to invite you to think about. 
serving others, even at church. In a little bit, we'll take our offering. And you know we got that communication card thing. And there's a comment section. And if God moves your heart, only do it for that reason. If God moves your heart, you'd be willing to serve as an usher. If you'd be willing to serve as a, a greeter at the Welcome Center or otherwise. If you'd be willing to help out as a sound tech or a projectionist or a vocalist or a musician or with properties projects like the fall cleanup, raking leaves or mowing the lawn. We got a crew of volunteers that do that and they're short down. If you could you just use right on that communication card. Here's one thing I would be willing to try. Here's one thing I'd be willing to try. Okay. Though it might be countercultural and contrary to the way we are wired, the Spirit rewires us to be like Jesus as servants to those in need. To be people who learn to serve like John and Mary. So I don't want to make it sound like uh, just that one insight miraculously and instantaneously and automatically turned their nightmare of a marriage back into a fairy tale. It wasn't that way. But that one insight gave them the perspective and the power to begin to change, to begin to do the hard work toward having a good and fulfilling marriage like God designed right from the beginning. Similarly, Jesus, the Jesus-inspired way of service is not a quick, easy fix to every relationship you may have. But it is the better way to which Jesus called us and to which he enables us. This is the word of the Lord. You know, we're going to sing a song right now that we'll be willing to uh, just kind of say, God, here I am. You serve me. Now how? You, you just have at it. Whatever you want to do with me. Let's stand and sing. you to be seated. Go ahead and take the elements of uh, your communion out of the bags. We love bef uh, because God first loved us, and in the same way, we serve because God first served us, and we truly believe that Jesus Christ is the perfect servant, not only in his life, but also in his death. He is the Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world, and he says, take and eat my body, and take and drink my blood, which is given and shed for you. Christ serves us in an amazing way and invites us now to his table to share in the forgiveness that he has won for us. Now, before we receive communion, uh, we just want to say as a, as a church of St. Matthew that uh, this is a meal that God wants for everyone.
to receive his gifts, to come to his table. But God also instructs us that he wants us to do it in a way that is beneficial for us and brings honor to his name as well. And the scriptures teach that this is a meal for those who believe in Jesus Christ as their God and the only way to salvation. For those who have been instructed in what this meal is and what it does, the true body and blood of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of our sins, and for those who come to the table of like mind and without conflict or any grief between each other. And so if you should be a person here today uh, who is not sure what they believe about Jesus or hasn't been instructed in the ways of our church or uh, has outstanding conflict or has disagreement, well, then we kindly invite you to abstain from communion today, um, but to come talk to one of us pastors afterwards, because again, this is something that we want for you and God wants for you just in the appropriate way. So having said that, uh, let's share in the Lord's Supper. A good rule of thumb as always is when you see me eat, you eat as well. And when you see me drink, go ahead and drink. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night he was betrayed, he took the bread and when he had given thanks, he gave it to his disciples and said, take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after the supper, he took the cup of wine and after he blessed it, he gave it to them saying, drink of it, all of you. This is the new covenant, which is poured out in my blood for the forgiveness of all of your sins. Do this as often as you drink of it in remembrance of me. Brothers and sisters, taste and see that the Lord is good and receive his forgiveness. Take and eat the body of Christ given for you. Take and drink the blood of Christ shed in love for you for the forgiveness of all of your sins. As you hear all of the clicking, go ahead and put your elements back in the bag. I don't think that's something I'll ever get used to. Um, and dispose of those as you leave today in the bin safely or put them in your pocket, your bag, and dispose of them safely at home. We just ask that you please do not leave them here. I invite you to stand. <clears throat> now this true body and true blood strengthen and preserve you in the one true faith until life everlasting. Depart in peace. You are forgiven. Amen. Will you pray with me? Heavenly Father, we thank you that you have forgiven us, that you have strengthened us, that you are present with us in this meal here today, a true feast, uh, a foretaste of the feast that is to come when your kingdom comes to us fully. Lord, we appreciate it so much. And we pray that uh, through this communion, you would strengthen us in love toward you and in loving service towards our brothers and sisters as well for their benefit and for your glory, Lord. Strengthen us today. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, as God's forgiven, strengthened people, we come together and we profess the faith that the church has professed for centuries um, in the words of the Apostles' Creed. So I ask that you join in with me as we speak it out loud. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the holy Christian church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. This is what we believe. Let's go to our God in prayer. Dear Lord, we thank you uh, again for your loving, humble service uh, in, in just becoming human, bearing with your disciples and teaching them the way of God. And Lord, most of all, in your death, and your suffering and your resurrection, you have won for us what we never could achieve on our own, salvation freely by faith. Help us joyfully go forward with uh, these good works and service as we honor and glorify your name. Lord, we pray for the Red Letter Challenge to be a continued blessing for our people, for our community, and to the ministry here at St. Matthew. Work powerfully through your word and by it through your people. We pray for guidance, Lord, continued guidance in filling 
vacancies here uh, in the staff at St. Matthew. Lord, we pray again, your will be done as you send workers into the harvest, and we trust in you. Lord, we pray for persecuted Christians today around the world, but uh, especially those in Myanmar. Give them strength, give them courage, give them the endurance to persevere their persecution, and Lord, uh, let them know and remind them always uh, of the prize that is set before them in Christ, that eternal life eternal salvation. Help them to cling to it and stand firm in the name of the, in front of their persecution. Lord, we pray for Otto Sohn, one of our homebound members today, and we ask that you be just intimately present with him. Remind him of that presence. Have him turn to you in, in prayer, in, in reading of the scripture, and everything else, uh, Lord. Draw him closer to you and help us as a church to bring him closer as well, whether it's through prayer or fellowship or anything else. Lord, uh, we want to lift up uh, this world today. And uh, we know that it's struggling and we know that it desperately needs you. So we continue to pray for your advancement and the advancement of your gospel in this world, Lord. Work even through people like us. We pray for President Biden and his administration to do all that is righteous and just and to serve the people and to serve you faithfully, Lord. But as with any person, uh, any human being, any leader, any ordinary person like us, Nobody can do that by themselves. And so we pray that you would turn him towards yourself, that you would strengthen him, uh, and that you would lead him with your wisdom and your guidance, not his own or anyone else's. Lord, we pray for those who are sick or hospitalized today, those who are suffering. Uh, we include in those prayers Mike Russell, Randy Tyler, Ed and Terry Dunlop, Pastor Daniel, Doug Ruby, Paula Confara, Julie Nathan, Marvin and Barb, and Lord, we pray for all of those who have COVID uh, or who are currently struggling with uh, the, the after effects of COVID and uh, all of those who um, are working in uh, fields that are exposed to COVID, protect them as well. But Lord, for all of these brothers and sisters in our uh, church and our community, Lord, we uh, lift them into your hands. Help them to hope in you and trust in you alone as they struggle through their illness. And we pray as well, God, according to your will, heal them and make them right again. Lord, we pray for Keith as he starts a new job, for wonderful weather and injury-free races, for um, the, the World Vision team. And Lord, we also um, uh, want to lift up uh, uh, the World Vision team again for, for safe and, and uh, uh, yeah, for just a safe uh, witness as well as they uh, continue in their, uh, in their marathon there. But Lord, uh, Give them guidance, give them strength, whatever their situation is, you know what their needs are before they even need it for all these people here. And Lord, we also want to lift up those who are grieving today, those who are suffering a loss, including the family and friends of Denise's fr Fannin's friend's sister. Lord, bind up their broken hearts, uh, help them in this time of grief and need, and remind them of the resurrection that is to come for those who depart in the faith. But Jesus, uh, all of these things that we lift up today we lift up in confidence knowing that you hear us and that you are the great mediator who advocates for us. And so, Lord, we pray all of this in your name, King Jesus. And we pray as you taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. We invite you to be seated for a few announcements. Uh, as always, guests, it's wonderful to have you with us today. If you have any questions or comments uh, about what we do here or why we do it or who we are, um, that's okay. We welcome that. Come talk to one of us pastors after the service or just reach out to the front desk by email or uh, by phone. That information is on our website at st-matthew.org. Uh, you'll see in front of you, as always, you got your communication cards in the pews. Go ahead and fill those out. Let us know that you're here, any comments, prayer requests, or anything else that you would like to know, and we'll get right back to you. Um, as um, yeah, Pastor Paul mentioned, in that comment section, you can also write uh, any interest in serving, any uh, talents that you have that might come in handy, just uh, let us know and uh, God will use it. 
we want to thank you for ongoing support of the ministry uh, throughout the pandemic as well and up to today. And as God is leading you to give, you can still do so in person here. You can do it by mail. You can also do it electronically if that's more convenient to you. And you can find that information again uh, at no, it's not up there. You know, you do it so many times, you forget the link. Uh, it's just one of those weeks. It's on the website. So go check that out on the gift on, on the give tab. Um, as as uh, as we have been recently, Bible study classes will continue for all ages at 10 a.m. We want to highly encourage you to be in God's word and to be in community. It's been a great time. And I know uh, a lot of people, uh, you know, kind of came in and we were finishing up the book of Luke and it was a, a little, you know, odd, but we're starting a new Bible study today for the adult class at Wald Lake, and we're going into the book of James. This will be our first week. So for any of you who are waiting for a fresh start or a new study, this is it. So we look forward to James at 10 a.m. So those are all the announcements that we have. As the offering is, uh, the plates are passed along, we'll have a video for you to watch, and uh, it's with some uh, fun characters about our upcoming trunk or treat. So go ahead and take a look at the screen. Ready? I am so excited. Look, I am ready. I have my hood and I have, and trunk or treat is, and I can't wait to get, it, it's a little bit wet outside today, but you, wait a minute. Are I, you thinking it's today? It's not today. It's not today. It's not, what, but I'm all ready. I know. I love that costume. Thank you very much. I, Yo, I like yours too. Oh, oh, okay. There we, there we go. go. Oh, that's, that's better. better. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Your costume looks great, but guess what? <laughs> what? I've been trying to get things together and it's still a week away. What? It's a week away? It's a week away? Yes. Saturday? Next Saturday, October 23rd. And you know what? We're not quite ready because we need more trunks. We need more trunks. Yes. If we're going to dress up and be here. Yeah. And we have a lot of kids who are excited about it. Yes, we do. And, and we have inflatables and let's see, there's a slide. There is a bounce house. There is this huge like playground inflatable for the little kids. I'm so excited. And don't we have something else? Something really we tall? Have, oh yes, we have the rock climbing wall. Oh, yeah. We have animals coming, axe yes. throwing, axe throwing, inflatable axes. Yes, Very really important. Really. Yeah. So, but but it's not till next Saturday. Next Saturday. Well, but that's good, right? Because right. then other people can sign up. That's right. So Get online, sign up. You got to come and have fun with us because otherwise we're just going to be in the bounce house all night. And by Who wants to miss that? Yeah. Come and have fun, have hot dogs and trunk or treat, but we need more trunks. So come and join us for the fun next Saturday, the 23rd, starting at 4.30. 4.30. See you then. I don't know if y'all heard, but there were bounce houses. <laughs> yeah, if you can sign up for that that would be amazing maybe even bring two trunks right some people have multiple cars but you gotta bring double the candy all right all right no two trunks one candy thing all right uh everybody it was great to have you in worship today i invite you to stand as you leave with a blessing uh, remember, on our own, we, we can't really do anything, right? We have to be connected to Christ always. We have to be and remain in him. And as we are in him, we continue to serve and go forward from our salvation. So as you go, be in Christ and go and serve faithfully. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you his peace. Amen. Amen.